What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the Modern King. Let's get straight into it. I spent 17 years of my life with an elderly man who smelled like cabbage just to be... <laughs> <laughs> that is so oddly specific who smelled like cabbage. Told, I've got nothing in the will, nothing, and he was worth 33 million. <laughs> so you were only in it for the bag? I don't know, I feel like karma served you justice on a hot plate there. Pound. And you think this is funny? I have wasted my life. <laughs> he, uh, Wasted your life? Well, I thought you married him. You're supposed to marry for love, not money, boo boo. Separated. I got the birthday girl and my wife. That's a separate case. Dave, I'm sorry, you're the only man at this table. Why are we doing separate cakes? But it's all women here. No, but I'm Bro, I'm gonna keep it a buck. If I went out to dinner and chat, let me know what you think about this. This is my hot take right here. Loki, you want some beef jerky? See you eyeing me. Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. If I invite my wife out, Cass out, and she invites five or six of her friends, well, first of all, she would have never she would never expect me to pay. But if I was in this scenario, out with my girl, four or five of her friends was out were out with us, I would not pay. There's no way I'm paying for all y'all. Y'all are all independent women. Go get you a man to pay for your stuff. I'm not paying for your I'm not paying for that. Chat, let me know. Would you pay for all of their meals if they went out with you and you were the only man at the table? Bro, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. You can call me whatever you want to call me. You can call me beta. Call me whatever you want. But I am not. You can call me broke. You can call me whatever. I am not paying for that. I'm not, I'm not responsible for paying everybody. I got the birthday but girl. you invited everybody. You invited all of us. I didn't invite you. <laughs> Ernestine invited you. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for who I brought. Okay, you're the only man at the table. I'm sorry, hold on. We was all doing Russian roulette, paying for credit cards and all that. Now all of a sudden you want to split checks? Uh, we doing split checks, That bro? was 2021. Yeah, okay? wait. Things were different. Not 2021. But I didn't sign up for that. Okay, there's nobody else doing it. But this is also why you don't have a bunch of female friends. Women do really be thinking. They think, they be thinking you're a sucker. Well, what happened to 2021? We used to be all doing the Russian roulette things in your card and this card. It's like, well, I'm not one of y'all no more. Okay. I got my girl and that's it. How about no? We're no. too participating. I know we got sorry. to. <laughs> I Dave, but pursue. you always say, like, I you're the only know. man at the table. You're no, not going to pay the check. If it's, but I, I don't, I'm not obligated. I got my whole family. If I love how they keep trying to gaslight him. You're the only man at the table. I identify as a woman. <laughs> what are you talking about? $700 for this whole table and it's my birthday. You're the only it's only man. It's only $700. It's only Shan. You mean Seven hundred dollars for a dinner? Cheap. Are you, you kidding me right now? Honestly, being cheap right now. Okay. First no, of all, if that was the case, I would have just, I just took you out. Are you being the Dre? Are you gonna let him sit here with a whole table full of women? I really feel like it's not his responsibility. And when y'all get a husband, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. Oh, yes. <laughs> because the wifey knows <laughs> that's my money too. <laughs> I appreciate her. Sorry, I have a husband. Uh, I do have a husband. Hold on, wait a minute. So, Thank so, y'all. No, so, Donnie, you're good because it's your birthday. Wow, these women are so entitled. So entitled. They really thought that this man was going to pay for all of the $700 tab. But you're the man, though. But but you're the only man at the table. Think if we as men shamed women that way. But you're the woman, though. When it comes to some scenario, probably that'd be crazy work. I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they've won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working 
working with them, they're going to fight for the money that you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for $12 million and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is, it's all free unless you win your case. Now, if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi, found in the description below, where you can start your free claim today. Decided to take me out on a date to Subway. Um, Subway. what's wrong with Subway? He's trying to give you a foot long, baby. <laughs> Do you not have money for something nicer? What a polite question to ask on a first date. I thought we were gonna go do something else on this. I do have money. Aren't you wearing a beanie? Shots fired! What, am I supposed to take you to Ruth's Chris when you're in a baggy Urban Outfitters t-shirt and a beanie? I just don't have high faith in you. Oh my. Why would you say that? He said, I, I just don't have high faith in you. <laughs> I feel like you're in it for the money and not for me. Of course I'm in it for the money. Well, never let it be said that they weren't being Honest. Bro. See, that's why I brought you to Subway. To see what your true character was. I got dressed this morning. I got up and I got ready and I took a shower and I did all the basics just to come somewhere nicer. Are they trying to say that they wouldn't have uh, done that otherwise? And where do you work? You're gonna be showing up stanking. Pop Johns. That makes sense. Let me ask your delivery driver. Yes. Pitiful. The phrase, those that live in glass houses. How oh, dare she insult this man? There's so many people, people living on government assistance. At least this dude has a job. Is shouldn't throw stones comes to mind. I don't think you should be worried about Dayton. I think you should be worried about your light bill. Because clearly you couldn't take me somewhere nicer, so I'm not interested. Well, don't they seem just charming? You work at fucking Papa John's. Because I wouldn't give you anything you wanted. <laughs> but a date's a subway crap. You know, that really proves to me how much you wanted me and how much you valued my time. I wanted to get to know you. At least that part, it seems, is going rather well. Why does it matter when I take you? And bro, she met it best. <laughs> Like, nobody's stopping their car in the middle of the street to like be like, who's the girl in the beanie? Like, come on, dude. I knew girls in high school that looked like this that were like skateboard chicks. I don't have to take you to the steakhouse just to get to know you. <laughs> Give me my phone back. Are you recording? You think this is funny? Give me my phone back. I don't think this girl... Uh, she was trying to play him like a fiddle. She thought he was a sucker. And I, for one, am inclined to agree. One. Wow, that's crazy work. Subway? <laughs> I gave her that foot long like I was working at Subway. <laughs> Extra salami? Extra pepperonis? Godfather, let's see what we got here. It's about value. Uh, yeah, value. and your value is low. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, just straight out the gate. And your value is low. Oh, wow. And how do you know that? You're not Because sure you're five foot four and 200 pounds. Ooh. Big back, big back. Lord have mercy. Okay. And 37 years old with two kids. That's how mm. I know. Single mom. All the sound bites coming out. In Kentucky. <laughs> okay. You, that's your opinion. It's not my opinion. Those are the facts. You never seen my body before, so you. I don't have to body. see your body. I know you're five foot four and almost 200 pounds with two kids in Kentucky. Ooh. And I see your picture. You just say. And I'm listening to how you talk. And I'm listening to your energy. I'm listening to your tone. I'm listening to your relationships. See what it is. You ladies don't like when somebody is just direct with you. I Excuse me, sir. Question. Bro, I love the Godfather. For you. Yeah. How old were you when you became a millionaire? Uh, I'm not a millionaire. I wish I were. What line of business are you in? I'm a lawyer. I used to be a millionaire, but my ex-wife has most of the money. So what did you learn from that divorce? Don't get divorced because in every state, the woman gets all the money. How much money did you lose from your divorce? Several million dollars. So it's safe to say marriage is a business. Marriage is an important economic decision. I'd recommend if you are building wealth, you certainly have a prenuptial agreement. And uh, even though you want to marry for love, just be careful. I mean, you married who knows everything about you is no longer your friend or advocate. Stop treating her as such. The minute she wants a divorce, she's instant enemy and not looking out for your best interests. As a husband, as a father, as a citizen, she will do everything she can to destroy you. And the minute she hires an attorney, oh, it just wrap. becomes war at yeah, that point. You it's a wrap, though. It's an absolute wrap. But dude, I, I just feel like the release, the the reason that the majority of relationships fail, and marriages fail, is because most people don't put in the work to build a good foundation of a solid relationship. P 
people just like get, I, I get it. I call it getting lost in the sauce. You get lost in the nut. You get lost in the in the sex. You get lost in the, the romance. And then you think that's love. No, nah, love is a lot more than that. And you have two options as a man. You can either go build your kingdom and pluck a peasant out of the village and have her be your princess and share her amongst your concubines. Or you can find a woman, which, which is what I recommend, but it's tough because you have to do it when you're a little bit younger most of the time, uh, unless you find a woman that's willing to do this with you. But I'd say like early 20s is when you can actually do this second one. You're both a peasant in the village or villagers as we call it, or as I call it, you both build up both of yourselves. Like she said, like at one point in time, Cass made more than I did. You build the kingdom to collectively as a, as a group, as a duo, as a partnership, right? You build this, this kingdom, and then both of you get to reap the rewards of your labor and your hard work. But the thing is, most women don't want to even build with a man. But that's what you need to look for. If you can get a girl to fall in love with you when you're broke... Bro, more than likely she's not going anywhere because she sees that your personality and your character are very valuable and she wants to be with you. This is why low body count is so important because if you get a chick with a high body count, she's going to be like, well, Jason had this. This is what we call Frankensteining a man. Well, Jason had this and Mark had that and, and this other guy had this. But, you know, if you find a chick that's actually really about you, then more than likely she'll stay with you. But it's, it's really tough these days to find that because a lot of modern women don't even want to build with a man. They just want to, they want to get with a guy that's at the finish line. Like I always say, man, like, Women pick the men at the finish line. They they wait for the guys to win the race, then they pick the winners. For over 50 years. Wow, 50 years. You know, one time I came home, and I pulled in the front driveway, and I saw this car down the street take off because somebody came out the back door. It was the repair. He's calling his old wife a runner. She's a runner. She's a track star. Brutal. I told you the washing yeah. machine was broken. The results reason follow. First. Child, Mr. Willis, you are not the father. That's what I think. No. Oh, that's, that's no. Mrs. Willis. That, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Second child. DNA test ain't wrong, honey. That's that's got to be a, it's a mistake. Gretel in her little panty sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Willis, you are not the father. You are reading oh. someone else's She's a runner. Smile. She's a track star. So I have a mailman and a and a plumber. Oh. Child three. Mailman, the plumber, the milkman. Mr. Wood, I, 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 I pray and I hope. Please. But you are not the father. Oh, 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 Fifty years. Oh, dude, that's that's crazy work. That's crazy work. Fifty years, bruv. Fifty long ones, man. Fifty long ones. He he really stayed down for her too. That's crazy. DNA testing need to be mandatory at birth. I don't care. I say no. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think DNA testing should be uh, mandatory at birth. I really do. I really, really, really do. I don't think it should be one of those things where, uh, you know, you wait after 10 years. Like, as soon as the baby's born, let's let's go ahead and see what's happening. My husband just pulled up to my house in a brand new truck. My man's winning. He's got the brand new whip. Good for him. And I'm not really sure if I'm sad about it or if I'm mad about it. There's a You're mad. A little bit of both happening there because a brand new truck really mattered more to this man than his marriage and his dog. Which, I mean, if he... Well, the new truck probably don't complain. Um, <laughs> the new truck probably don't make fun of him. Wants to be the loser that lives in an apartment with a brand new car, then by all... Hey, bro, you can live in an apartment and have a new whip and you're not a loser? What are you talking about? means be my guest all he's doing is showing me that he really was a financial burden on me and that i should not keep him around one of the most consistent arguments we had was that he wanted a brand new hundred thousand dollar truck and trust me when i say we are not in the tax bracket to be having a hundred thousand dollar truck bro me either chat are you in that tax bracket hundred thousand dollars for a truck nor does he have a real use for that car, especially now that he lives in an apartment. If he a hundred thousand dollars for a truck is crazy work. I'm gonna be honest. I, I can't even afford a hundred thousand dollar truck. Good lord. The car that he has been driving up until this point is my car. He didn't own a car when he decided to up and skip out, and I was nice enough to let him borrow my car, which you know what? I shouldn't have been, and I should have just left him stranded. Apparently, since I guess a truck was more important than his wife. She Oof, man, she she hot about that truck. Hey, if he really wanted the truck, who cares? If he went into debt for the truck, who cares? As long as he's happy, right? 
people make dumb purchases all the time. Um, I did when I was younger. Uh, you know what I mean? Oh, I think I've seen this clip, but we gotta react to it. This one's so beautiful. This one's so beautiful. How it started. I do not accept a coffee or a walk as a possible date option in either studio. First of all, I'm not a dog that needs to be walked. Second, I have an espresso machine at home. Works fabulous. We're not doing drinks either. You're gonna try to get me drunk and take me back home. No. We are doing dinner. You're gonna pick me up. We're gonna come to the restaurant. We're gonna see your table manners. We're gonna see what you order. We're gonna see, do you hold your chopsticks correctly? We're just gonna, you know, study you a bit. Okay, so dinner it is. I started the egg freezing process. I did some preliminary tests that showed that my egg count is really low. The doctors was it worth having those really high standards? Was it? Did tell me that that might affect my fertility. It's just so sad. I have been like crying the entire day. Like I just feel this giant pain in my stomach right now. I, and I hate to see it. I really do because there's probably a lot of women out there that are doing the same exact thing have astronomically high expectations of men and then they hit a certain age and realize that what men value in them is gone. Your youth, your fertility, the ability to give them a child. Like a lot of you women, if you don't figure out how to get on the bandwagon and get one a man when you're a little bit younger, more than likely that ship is gonna, it's gonna sail. Us as men, who, who, who was it? Al Pacino? Didn't he pop out a baby at like 80 something years old? How old was Al Pacino? Uh, or was it who was it? Robert De Niro? Didn't he just have a kid though? How many biological children? What actor had a baby at? Al Pacino, 82, is having a baby with his 29 year old girlfriend. <laughs> bro, this is crazy work. This is crazy work, bro. How? How? How, Sway? How? That's crazy. Yeah, I can't even get on these websites. There's just all this freaking, there's all these ads. Al Pacino's, meet his four kids. Yeah, man, that's crazy. He got grown kids. This man's got grown children and got a kid with a 29 year old. Look at this man. Al Pacino calls fatherhood a mini miracle. Says raising a baby at 84 feels the same as it did before. Well, yeah, when you got all the bags in the world, probably makes it a little bit easier to raise a child. If you guys want me to react to things, don't forget to drop them in the subreddit. It's reddit.com slash r slash Levi Nix. Uh, those S's were just kicking my butt just then. <laughs> <laughs> um, just try to post things that don't have music or anything like that. But yeah, man, ladies, as you get older, it's like your standards should get lower because the value that you can actually bring to a man of value aren't going to be as valuable, right? You don't have your youth anymore. You don't have your fertility. More than likely, you have more trauma and with trauma comes a tougher time to pair bond. And when it's harder to pair bond, it's harder for a guy to even get close to you. And as men, we want to be close to our partners. I preach relationships. A lot of, a lot of the channels that I watch, they don't preach relationships. They preach being alone, going your own way, which, hey, I, I applaud those guys. If you want to do that, go for it, man. Go for it. But I just really think we're better together and together we're better. I think we thrive off of being a, fa a familial unit. As a kid, I don't know about you guys, but as a kid, I always wanted, because I was raised in a single mother household, I always wanted my mom to have a man around. I always wanted my mom to be in a relationship. I always wanted to have a dad that was there. And my dad, I wanted my dad to be there. But my mom didn't pick the best guy to be the dad. You know what I mean? Kind of picked a bad, a, pa a bad suitor, and then she became a single mom. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys, like let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat, like were you raised in a two parent household? Or were you raised by a single mom? Let's, let's see the percentage of uh, percentage of boys raised by single mothers. Let's just look at this really quick. And see, this is this is where I have a problem with the whole term toxic toxic masculinity. If if it was so toxic, how did we get to where we are today? Because it, it seems like men most of the mostly coordinated everything to be in the modern world that we live in right now. I posted something on Twitter, and let me pull it up. Um, or on X. I, I'm, st I'm still getting used to calling this X. Um, but if masculinity, uh, where was the post at? Let's see if I can't find it really quick. 
But it was something about if masculinity is so bad, then why do we have so much degeneracy? Because most kids are raised... Okay, if masculinity were truly toxic, kids growing up without dads would be better off, but that's not the case. These young men often end up more depressed, aggressive, and criminal. It seems we need more masculinity in society, not less. Let's look at the stats really quick. In the United States, 40% of all live births are to single mothers. That's a crazy number. This means that 40% of the children in the U.S. are growing up without a father in the home. 81% of single-parent homes are he headed by a mother. Single fathers are far less common than single mothers, making up only 16% of single-parent families. The number of kids... The number of kids being raised by single mothers has more than doubled since 1968. More than doubled. Children raised by single mothers are more likely to experience violence, uh, un unalive themselves, continue a cycle of poverty, become drug dependent, commit a crime, perform below their peers in education, have lower socioeconomic status. Just think about the people that you know right now in your life. Think about some of your friends. Some of the people that are not the most successful, but some of the people that are the most grounded and are in good relationships came from a two-parent household. Some of the most damaged people I know, including myself, come from a single mother household. Their parents split up. There was a lot of toxicity at home. But some of the most stable and like normal people I know were raised by a mom and a dad. Because they had that stability. They had the logic and the reason of the father and they had the nurturing and the empathy and the emotion of the mom. The nurturing versus the discipline it's what, it's what all kids need. Little girls need it. Little boys need it. Children need a two-parent household. And there was a chick. I saw her. It was, it was like a TED Talk. She goes, you know how you equate a woman's value as a wife is in the man she can keep. And I think the opposite is true. You know how you can equate a man's value as a husband is the wife he can keep. So it's like we need each other. I know a lot of people think we don't, but I really think we do. And I feel like that's where we really lost our way. And that's why I preach what I preach. And I talk about being the best version of yourself because when you're the best version of yourself, you can attract. When you chase things, they run. You chase money, it runs. You chase women, they run. But when you're the best version of yourself, things are attracted to you. Be the best you can be until the best come around, man. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, go cop the two ebooks, The Four Pillars of Personality and The Four Steps to Style. I will. Or Loki, did you have a good time? It's like, Dad, I'm trying to get off my place. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.